Uh, good evening. I request Vice Chancellor of Nalsa University of Law, Professor Balakista Reddy, to kindly entrust the chief guest and other dignitaries to the dais. I request Dr. Suresh Kumar to please hand over the welcome bouquet to our chief guest. I request Dr. Rahul Gandhi Bhura to please give away the welcome bouquet to the vice chancellor. I request uh, Mr. C. A. Pravi to please give away the welcome bouquet to Mr. Ramesh Manthana. I request Dr. Vivek Pani to please hand over the welcome bouquet to Ms. Indu Madhavi Iragavarupo. I request Dr. Deepti Jok to please hand over the welcome bouquet to Dr. Vidyalata Reddy. I request all the dignitaries on the stage and off the stage to kindly rise for the national anthem. I request the Vice Chancellor of Nalsa University of Law, Professor Balakista Reddy, to kindly deliver the welcome address. Good evening uh, and welcome to one and all present here. I extend my warm welcome to Her Excellency Dr. Tamil Sai Saundar Rajan, Honorable Governor of Telangana and Honorable Lieutenant Governor Pondicherry, Puducherry, Professor Vijulata Reddy, Head of the Department, uh, CMS. I also uh, welcome uh, Mr. Ramesh Manthani, Vice President, HR and Operations, Evoke Technologies, Ms. Indu Madhvi, Co-Founder, SHRD India, respected faculty members, industry leaders, uh, dear students. Uh, Your Excellency, this university was started in 1998 with Act 34 with the objectives of producing professionally competent, technically sound and socially relevant lawyers. Of course, this we recently we, we changed this because introduction of you know, management school here. So now we are you know uh, producing professionally competent, technically sound and socially relevant managers also. This is the change which because of the uh, management department here. Though management department, uh, in Nalsar, we have apart from the regular LLB, honors courses, LLM, MPhil, PhD, and uh, 
uh, unique value added distance learning courses we have also management course mba and ipm courses so though the management department is a young but it is a dynamic it's conducting lot of programs in the recent times whether it's organizing you know conferences giving consultancies and other things so i congratulate hod uh, professor vijilata organizers faculty members of department of management studies thank you for your excellent contribution uh, management faculty of course now we know uh, when we the being a, this is a hr conclave uh, hr management is going to be a very important thing we all know that india is moved from or moving rather developing country third world country we used to say that india is a third world country to third largest economy we all know that now india is a emerging economy in the recent past if you look at the uh, knowledge society which dominates earlier people used to respect whether individuals or uh, nation states based on their economic political power but friends we all know today countries are respected because of their technology and also knowledge 21st century we all know that knowledge society so human resource management is playing and is going to play excellent role in the years to come of course we all know that india being a developing country but it was saying that you know 19th century will belongs to uk or europe 20th century was uh, U american century 21st century is asian century or more particularly sometime we refer indian century of course as a 21st century belongs to india we have a lot of challenges one big challenge again it's related to hr is population population is a liability most of the time but it is an asset you all know that india is the youngest country in the world youth nation of the world so 65% of our population is below 35 years age that is what the advantage of hr or human resource management today we as a institutions or individuals have to look the requirements of the global society not the requirements of uh, india or particular country that is where you are all going to play important role and uh, more particularly when i say indian econ economy if you look at recent past changing from agrarian economy to uh, service sector so traditional commerce to e-commerce same commerce all these things the hr managers or hr management people are going to play important role in this scenario this is what i want one uh, reference i want to make here is that one important treaty that's called wto gats agreement gats is a general agreement on trade in services all the global services whichever the profession you are we are whether you are a lawyer doctor or engineer or technocrat anything part of this particular agreement being a, india is a signatory india you know following these things so there are global challenges part of this uh, wto gats agreement we all are, have to get ready to face this challenge though namesake it is the gats are four words but all global services 160 plus services are part of that since the human resource management is shifting from other areas to you know hr i think this is a one area where we all have to uh, remember and get ready to face these global challenges of course there is no doubt india in this process actually if you look at in two minutes how these uh, hr influenced hr policies or hr management influenced in the recent years is five important factors which influenced one is the globalization we all know that globalization the impact of globalization on the human resource global governance in general and more particularly human resources liberalization privatization digitalization that is what you know lot of impact on the human resources and recently covid pandemic or i call it a covidization we all know that last three years every country every individual we are you know affected maybe a degree of difference is there affected with covidization so year after the countries are going to make policies in keeping in view of the covidization or what i called the pre covid post covid that is the scenario which is happening i think we all hr managers how to keep this uh, new entry that's the covidization in mind and we have to prepare our policies uh, 
to face the global challenges. With this, uh, once again, I thank uh, Her Excellency for uh, coming here. Thank you once again. Thank you. I invite uh, Mr. Ramesh Manthana, co-founder SHRD, to kindly address the participants. Good evening, all. Uh, good evening to all the dignitaries on the dais, uh, Honorable Governor of Telangana and Lieutenant Governor of uh, Puducherry, uh, Dr. Srimati Tamilisai Sondararajan Navaragal, uh, Vice Chancellor of Nalsa University, uh, Professor V. Balakishtha Redigaru, and uh, Vidyulita Redigaru, uh, and uh, co founder uh, Madhavi. And all my senior colleagues uh, from the HR fraternity, uh, the program coordinators, you know, uh, Prakash Gangli and Amish, you know, who have made this possible. And dear students, you know, it has been, it is honor to be with all of you here, uh, standing in front of here. On this occasion of the final day of the conference and the convocation uh, on legal acumen for HR leaders, jointly presented by Nalsa University and SHRD. Uh, it is a great privilege uh, to be standing in front of you. And a uh, uh, little about SHRD, you know, SHRD uh, started with a philosophy uh, uh, from a Rig Veda uh, mantra, you know, Ano Bhadra Kartavya Tu Vishwat. It means, you know, let noble thoughts come to me from all directions. Okay, that's where we thought, you know, it's important to share and learn uh, from other HRs. So Society of uh, uh, Human Resource Development started in August 2014 with a vision to be an inclusive committee which articulates integrated partnerships for the development of HR. Our intention was to bring various HR professionals uh, cutting across industries and uh, various industries uh, for their professional development, uh, focused on advanced individual leadership, career planning and development. Uh, as uh, St Steve Wayne has said, you know, human resources isn't a thing we do. It is a thing that runs our business. I think from morning we have seen you now various people talking about HRs getting into the business. Uh, too often, you know, all of us know that HR de department doesn't seen as a strategic partner. Now, when it comes to running a business, uh, this couldn't be further uh, from the truth. But we believe, you know, when given the proper tools and the trust to be empowered and make decisions, we believe that HR can be one of the most vital voices at the table of any board. So uh, with that, you know, a thought is where SHRD has started. We have conducted various programs almost uh, in the last eight years or so. Uh, we have done uh, around 50 programs, uh, uh, cutting across, again, uh, right from the contemporary themes. Uh, there is one which is uh, very focused uh, in upskilling of the youth. And there is one set of programs which we done uh, for the uh, girl-child empowerment. Okay, and the uniqueness of us is we do all this free of cost. Uh, and that's possible uh, because of the sponsors like uh, the AEP certification and partners like you know, Nalsar and all uh, with whom we connect in, in various forums. So with the ever-changing landscape of HR, we felt that legal aspects in an industry is no more a specialized entity. Okay. It is a basic need for every HR, and that's how this program got developed. And uh, we have done this, I think, sixth. This is the sixth week which we are doing, uh, and uh, majorly focused on one, on definitely on the leadership skills, and we are focused on. And the other aspect is uh, the uh, code of wages and the code of social security, which is, I think, it is the the biggest thing which uh, our Honorable Prime Minister has brought it forward. 
I, I know, I know how it will go forward. You know, we will know in few uh, years or few months how it is going to happen. But our intention was, you know, to make our HR professionals understand what it is. So we at SHRD believe that learning is a continuous aspect, and as committed entity towards human excellence, we will continue to strive to bring best in class to help develop HR professionals at all stages of career, whether it is the freshers coming out of the college and becoming management trainees, or people who are aspiring to be the CHROs or the CEOs. So thank you once again for being here and participating in the program. Thank you all. I request Professor Vidulita Reddy head of the management department, Nalsa University of Law, to kindly introduce the chief guest. So, I feel it an honor to introduce our governor, Her Excellency, Dr. Tamilasai Saundar Rajan, governor of Telangana and lieutenant governor of Puducherry. Uh, and uh, to introduce her, I think all of us know her. Okay, so we know her so well because she has been here for quite a while. And the fact that we know that she pioneered the vaccination drive in our state and she, uh, you know, motivated the frontline workers during COVID. And Telangana was fortunate to have a doctor at the helm of the affairs during pandemic, right? And uh, however, However, all of this we know, and I don't want to introduce that to you because you know it. What I want to introduce you today is because you are the HR people, I would like to raise one acumen thing from her life journey. Okay. And HR people, India is banking on demographic advantage and HR people are the people who have to put right person at right place. So you are in a way nation builders. So in this context, let me take her life journey as an inspiration story for you and for my students. She spent at least a decade of her life in intense education, a course medicine. You can understand intense and she's super specialized. And then within her specialization, gynecology and super specialization within that is an evergreen field within medicine where success rate is near 100 and a field very conducive for women. It is actually by default reserved for women. But politics on the other side, success rate is below one in decimals, not in numericals. She chose that. And second, she has to spend at least 10 years to be known who in the politics to be known also you need a decade of lifetime. She took that. And politics at her time is not a field very conducive for women. And more importantly, she has chosen a political party which didn't had big vote share in her state at that time. Now you tell me, is she successful? Did she make successful choices in life? But she is sitting here holding the highest post of the state. <laughs> this, this is, this I call it is acumen. Okay, so I think her life is an inspiration for all of us and for the students to pursue passion, not success. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now is the time that we have all been waiting for. I request Honorable Governor of Telangana and Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry, Dr. Tamilasai Saundar Rajan, to kindly deliver the Chief Guest Address. A special good evening to each and every one. I am very happy that I am standing in the hall of a very prestigious institution and really very happy to meet you all. And my respects to Dr. Professor Balakrishna Reddy, Vice Chancellor and Registrar, Nazar University of Law, Hyderabad. 
really he mentioned in a short introduction very precisely in one word he said how hr is very important for this country is this country is the youngest country because average indian is 29 years when compared to usa it is 48 years and japan it is 38 years and european countries it is 42 years and china it is 39 years so yavas is the youngest country so because of that the seminars and the management courses and the hr courses are very important so i really thank him for inviting me here even though it's a very hectic date for me but i after coming here even though this is almost the fifth program of my day but when i entered the campus all my tiredness vanished so such a nice campus and as it is said in the introduction and in, which was given to me uh, professor balakrishna reddy was here from since uh, 2000 and he has been closely associated with the developing of nalsar brick by brick that i could identify when he was identifying the bricks of stones stone bricks identified and he was very proud these are bricked from the campus and because of that it was built so it's such a strong stony building for that you are one of the cause of that so i really appreciate and madam vidyalata reddy the head of department of management studies nazar university of law uh, actually when i when she started i was thinking the long paper she should not uh, read about me because i myself get bored <laughs> after getting the introduction in each and every uh, conference but she introduced me I, I think one of the best introduction ever i had because in a nutshell she told i selected a party which was definitely uh, did not have any say in tamil nadu but only one thing she did, it's at least a decade, now it's two decades it took for me. Immediately, immediately after completion of my post-graduation in gynecology, I joined a political, the political party and almost 20 years, everyone used to think, because my father, a very strong Congress leader, and he was six times MLA and one time MP. And then everyone was surprised, a diagonally opposite party I joined. And that, as you said, that is the acumen. That is the foresight. And everyone used to say, why she joined this party? But I had a uh, very good uh, foresight and conviction. Definitely we will come up because I believed myself. That is the big thing. I won't be a failure. I will develop along with the organization. I Otherwise, I will develop the organization. So that is the... Uh, mindset each and every HR person should have. And my respects to Mr. Ramesh Mantana, co-founder, SHRD India, Ms. Indu Madhavi, co-founder, SHRD, distinguished guests, esteemed media friends, beloved students and all the participants. Today, HR from morning you have heard great lectures. So almost your mind and brain is full of knowledge about HR. So as a first citizen, I want to tell certain simple things which could be successful in your life. Today morning, I attended a CIA program. And before the program, they were telling me it is very difficult to find HR people, accurate people for the accurate job. The main challenge, we can invest, we can plan, and we can do anything. But this is the problem which we are facing. Then I told, what is the problem? It could be solved. And then why, why, madam, you are telling? It could be solved because that is the problem we are all facing. Then I told, I narrated one incident. I always tell this incident to, particularly in business, among business person and HR people. One of the friends came to my house and she watched old friend she was telling no for, for the past 10 years 15 years i am seeing the same cook in your house and i am seeing the same driver in your house 
and in my house every year i am changing and she is not uh, cooking the to my expectation so how but is she a very good cook you are having her for more than 15 years i told she is good in idli making but i love dosa but only one thing i did i started loving idli than finding a person who is good in cooking dosa that is easy no than finding a person who is good in dosa started liking idlis that that's all the problem that is a major hr solution i told then she was telling oh this is very simple solution because nobody is without any potential definitely one will be with some potential with some talents which the higher authorities or the managers are unable to identify but definitely a human being means they should have some potential so when we give that job according to their potential or adjust according to their potential then it solves the problem instead of searching because everyone as swami vivekananda says everyone is born with potential it is our duty to unfold it that's all and see the positivity in everything another small story i always say two a manager selected two marketing persons they were sent to an island to see the opp to assess the opportunities of their business one came and told there is no any opportunity for our business at all other came and told no ample opportunity for the business the manager was surprised because two of them were selected at the same time were sent to the island at the same time they gave the same period for assessing the situation one is telling it is there is no any possibility for our business at all there and other is telling there is ample possibility of the business then he asked the reason that is shoe company one told the people are not having a habit of wearing shoes so there is no any opportunity for us the other said they are not having the oppor- they are not having the habit of wearing the shoes but when we uh, make them aware of wearing the shoes and when we uh, make them practice that uh, shoe wearing is good for their health definitely they will start wearing the shoes so we will have oppor- uh, ample opportunities so that is the sight of two people on the same situation so if we see always the positive aspect definitely we will have some business so that is the main core of the hr character and each and every year your teachers told everything your professors told everything and i want to say sharpen yourself each and every day even the nail which doesn't have blood supply which doesn't have a nerve supply grows 0.5 mm every day so we have to sharpen our skills whatever may be the cap- in whatever may be the capacity and whatever may be our profession we have to sharpen ourselves because the world is moving much forward faster than we expect two people were chased by a lion and one was wearing the shoe the other person t- looked and told laughed and told even if you wear the shoe lion will catch hold of you then he told even after wearing the shoes lion will catch me i know but my intention is run faster than you that's all because if i run faster than you lion will catch hold of you then after eating i will have ample time to run away so my that is that is the now business so we have to run faster if he stands still for a minute definitely there are so many people to run faster than us so these all the simple law so that mantra so we have to practice and uh, i am really happy that the labor code uh, 2020 is considered to be the biggest reform in the independent india and even after decades since independence approximately 90% of workers working in the unorganized sector did not have access to all social security and i learned that this is the program to demystify the beliefs before the law was made and the four codes which should be propagated so these type of programs 
definitely will convey the good message because whatever may be the situation the right thing should be conveyed to the person for example one farmer was having a small piece of land and he wanted to sell the land so he called an advertisement agent and he told i want to sell the land so please write an advertisement is a very good advertisement agent and he wrote a small piece of land is there this land is there is a well in this land and two or three trees are there it is nearer a college nearer a college means it will be 50 kilometers that is the advertisement no it is nearer a railway station the hospitals are nearer like that he wrote and he gave it to the person then that person told farmer told no i am not going to sell the land that advertisement person uh, agent got angry just few minutes back only you told you are going to sell the land but immediately after writing the advertisement why are you telling you are not going to sell the land he was telling till you write the advertisement i didn't know such good things are in my farm so after you wrote i thought why i should sell the farm so it's such a good farm so i can uh, uh, earn my livelihood from this farm so you go away so these type of uh, encouragement and enlightenment is only needed when each and every scheme is introduced i always feel because our honorable prime minister is introducing so many schemes sometimes when it is not correctly propagated people are not aware the program and the schemes are so good to them for example aishman bar as a doctor when it was introduced i was very happy because i have seen patients dying for want of 100 rupees 200 rupees in government hospitals so if a patient is provided with 5 lakh rupees how they can save so many patients but the patients were not aware then we propagated it in the, particularly uh, i am in charge of i in charge um, uh, lieutenant governor of puducherry and we took great efforts to popularize it then after popularizing it people came forward to get even the complicated surgeries some of the private institutions or in the government institutions which were denied for them for want of money so these type of programs definitely needed to propagate the schemes and particularly the labor code as it is said it is concentrating and it is taking care of organized sector as well as unorganized sector as 90% of them belongs to unorganized sector and as it is said by our vice chancellor the now the era is pre covid and post covid we are all blessed people we are less affected but think of the unorganized sector laborers they are the most affected people but because of some of our good economical uh, schemes as well as like uh, providing uh, like uh, karib kalyan yojana it's a great scheme providing at least rice to them so that at least they can take the basic food of for the family provide food for the family so these type of schemes really saved us and i am really very happy to come and meet you all because it's not a, an address is not a great event because uh, you would have had good uh, message from all of them so in a lighter sense i wanted to tell some of the few points so that i can convey the message to you successfully and be successful managers as well as successful lawyers and i want uh, one thing everyone used to tell because i saw the symbol of uh, uh, law that is the uh, scale uh, in tamil tirukural says 2000 years back itself lawyer should be like a tulakol tulakol means like a balance but i was surprised all over the world even now the symbol of law is scale so how our ancestors and our uh, literary people have thought about they had a, such a foresight and i always wish the lawyers because i in this uh, azadika amrut mahotsav we are celebrating our 75th year of independence and the advocates and lawyers took part in the freedom struggle than any other profession so i always salute them so i want to 
salute the lawyers because they because of them most of the most of the great leaders were of this profession and i thank them and i salute them in this event so that uh, we are thankful to them also because we are all uh, freely moving freely talking because of their sacrifices and i'm really very happy to be here and wish you all the best let us all be happy happy and healthy and as a doctor i always convey a message you may be lawyers you may be doctors but please look after your health do yoga in the morning do meditation be relaxed don't compromise your happiness for anything and be healthy also because if you are sick we will be only benefited so we don't want to be benefited like that so please be healthy also thank you so much thank you madam for that inspiring address now i request the chief guest to present the certificates and i request vice chancellor and head of the department to please join her so as the name is called kindly walk up to the dais and receive the degree from the chief guest Dr. Vijay Bhaskar Reddy, Ms. Kar uh, Kartika Tirupati, Mr. Manoj Gopala Krishnan Nair. Ms. Saswati Saha, Mr. Chittuluri Ravi, Mr. Yadukishor Devanjanam. Ms. Preeti Nanda Nayak, Mr. Ravi Kumar Panuganti, Ms. Anusha Gade, Dr. P. B. Srinivas, Mr. Rakesh Morissetti. Mr. D. N. Srinivas, Mr. Aravind Madhur, Ms. Madhavi Ganeshan, Ms. Komal Agarwal. Now I request the chief guest to hand over a momento to team SHRD. Team SHRD is represented on dais by Mr. Ramesh Mandhana and Ms. Indu Madhavi Iragavarupu. I request the chief guest to hand over a memento to the Department of Management, Nalsa University of Law. Department of Management is represented by Professor Balakista Reddy and Professor Vidulata Reddy. I request chief guest to hand over a memento to Team AEP certification.
now i would request professor balakista reddy and mr ramesh mandhana to hand over a token of gratitude to our chief guest now i request ms indu madhavi iraga varupu to kindly deliver the vote of thanks it's an esteemed privilege to propose a vote of thanks no words can resonate our gratitude towards honorable excellence ma madam governor for obliging our request and gracing the occasion thank you so much ma'am your presence boosted our confidence and accelerated our urge to bring in more such programs partnering with elite institutions to be sharing the expertise and having an ideology of creating a legacy this can be done only by progressive mindsets nal sir being the fountain head Thank you, VC Sir Balakrishna Reddy Garu, to have this program happen to this dynamics. A special mention of thanks to all core team, Nal Sir, facilitators of the program for taking time and sharing the knowledge, Dr. Amish and Dr. Pa Prakar, for their relentless support. Thank you so much. Thank you for the learners for being with us. The six weeks of learning, the active participation, and ready to make a better contribution at workplace and thereby a better world. A word of gratitude must go to Mr. Shrinivas C R of Accenture and Dr. Anand Reddy I S T D. Thank you very much, sirs. Thank you, Shiva Karuna Karan Garu and Satya Shrinivas Garu for the valuable partnership in getting the A E P certifications. Thanks to all who worked behind the virtual learning interface and the workshops today, the program coordinators and especially the student volunteers. Last but never the least, a big thanks to all S H R D founder members, especially Ramesh Garu. Pawan and VBR sir for being a strong fallback. Thank you all. Uh, for the um, and worst, that's outside X, a student-run magazine, and that's why IPM first-year students. Um, as such, we are very proud of our uh, IPM students, and this is from that. Thank you. That concludes the proceedings of the day. I request all the dignitaries on stage and off stage to kindly rise for national anthem. Thank <laughs> you.